Hello again in Anime Realm, with a new anime called, The Strongest Magician in the Demon Lord's Army Was a Human. Don't forget to like and subscribe to see the next part. Ike is a magician in the Demon Army. This dude got mad strength and skills, so they bumped him up to commander status. Right now, he is on a mission to attack Arsenam's fort with his crew and take control of it. Ike is strategizing on how to handle his army and damn he manages to bring the fort walls down. Dude even surprised they went down quicker than he expected. His piggy assistant fills him in, saying it's because Ike hooked the orcs up with a battering ram, just like he told them to. Later on, we see humans and demons going at it inside the city walls, and the demons straight up dominating. Ike decides to pay a visit to the human army commander. As soon as the commander lays eyes on him, he recognizes Ike. Dude made a name for himself as the brigade commander of the Demon Lord Army's 7th Corps, the Undying Brigade. Ike lays out three options for the commander. Option 1, surrender and hand over his territories. Option 2, go out like a true warrior and off himself. Option 3, run away while Ike chills and enjoys the scenery outside. The human commander is hella surprised to see a demon showing mercy, but he ain't feeling any of the choices, so he straight up attacks Ike. But Ike ain't one to mess with and takes the commander down with just one spell. The piggy comes over to check if Ike's safe, and damn he is relieved to see Ike all good. Ike tells the piggy to take care of the wounded commander and the soldiers who surrendered outside. And piggy is hella surprised by this move. Meanwhile, there's this smoking hot lady keeping an eye on Ike through a magic crystal. She can't believe Ike managed to capture Arsenom with just one brigade in only a week, but she always knew Ike had potential. Ike then puts up a barrier spell to secure the room he chilling in. He takes a look at the destruction caused by the battle and feels guilty about hurting so many peeps. Dude no he ain't never gonna get used to the blood and gore of war, because he reveals he ain't no demon, he is a human. Ike explains how his teacher Romerg was this badass demon mage. Romerg knew everything about an advanced civilization that used to live in this world. Even though Ike was human, Romerg took him in and raised him teaching him all his magic knowledge, and right before he kicked the bucket Romberg warned Ike never to mention the advanced civilization because it would bring disaster. And he also instructed him to never remove his mask and robe, because if the demon lord finds out who you really are, he ain't never gonna forgive you. And Ike said that he would take his advice seriously, like a little cute boy in his Halloween costume. Then Ike starts thinking that this room is all locked up with a badass barrier, and ain't nobody getting in without his permission. But damn he's hella surprised when he spots a maid hiding right under the table he's sitting at. She's begging him not to kill her, all scared and shaking, saying she ain't seen nothing. And wouldn't you know it, this clumsy maid bangs her head on the table and passes out. I can't believe his secret identity, the one he's been keeping quiet for 20 freaking years, got revealed in such a cliché way. Then the scene cuts to him walking around Arsenom. His piggy's rolling with him and says that they took over the city but Ike letting too many humans survive. He tells the piggy not to sweat it because the current demon lord ain't like the last one, and he only cares about the results. The piggy then says that the other leaders want to massacre the people and torch the whole town, but Ike tells him that if they kill them all, who the hell we will collect the taxes from. He explains that Arsenom is a damn trading city, and if there ain't nobody living there, the whole trade game gonna stop. Then out of nowhere, Ike sees a crowd of people waiting to talk to him, and the piggy tells them they don't have the authority to speak with his lord, but Ike ignores him and tells the humans to speak up. One of the humans all hesitant asks Ike how much they gotta cough up in taxes, but to his surprise Ike tells him that the tax is gonna be the same as usual, and they all stoked about it. But then Ike warns them that if they resist the demon army, they will gonna get punished. But before he can hear their response though, he gets zapped to some dark ass labyrinth. There he gets attacked by a monster he can barely see, and turns out that the hot woman from earlier summoned him there. He tells the hottie that she promised him that she wouldn't summon him out of thin air, and he unleashes one of his dope spells to take down the monster. The hottie tells him he's gotten stronger and introduces herself as Sephiro, the seventh core commander of the Demon Lord's army. Ike explains that she's his boss, the only demon who knows his secret, and he tells her, instead of trying to kill him every damn time, she should hit him up with a message like a damn normal person. Sephiro states that this would not be any fun, and Ike wonders if she summoned him here so he can make his report. She states that she has already found out everything with the help of her familiars, so he wonders why she has summoned him here in this case. She tells him that Demon Lord Darrow wants to see him in the flesh, and she's saying he might be the first brigade commander to get such a dope honor. Ike wonders why the Demon Lord wants to see him, 
and she states that he must have impressed him by taking Arsenam in a single week. She mentions that she'll take him there if he puts his hand on her shoulder, and he does it. Sephiro's disappointed because she thought maybe he'd try to feel up her breasts, but he is too damn chicken to do it and she then teleports their asses. Meanwhile, that maid from earlier wakes up and tries to bounce from the room. But she sees she's trapped in a damn barrier. She finds some food in the room with a note she can't read. But she tries out the food anyway, and she finds it delicious so she starts scarfing it down like she ain't ate for ages. Next thing we see, Ike and Sephiro are getting close to the demon lord's castle. The miasma around the castle is making Ike uneasy because he ain't a demon. They walk towards the castle gates, and Ike spots a magician at the entrance. He's thinking, hey, does this magician check everyone who steps foot in the castle? Sephiro confirms it. And that's worrying Ike because if they strip off his mask and robe, his true identity might get exposed. Sephiro tells him not to sweat it and uses her magic to surround Ike with a crazy amount of power. Seeing this, the magician thinks that he expected this much from Romberg's grandson, and Ike is shocked that the magician knows his grandpa, and the magician stated that everyone knew him as he was the master magician. Then Sephiro's like, hurry your ass up, the demon lord's waiting. They step into the castle, and Ike explains that the demon lord's castle Doberberg is hella massive. It's built to flex the demon lord's mad power and magic skills. Ike's getting tired walking down the super long hallway, and he thinks that it ain't fair that Sephiro can fly. He's always wanted flight magic, but his control ain't as tight as hers. The most he can do is jump crazy high. And then they arrive at the gate to the throne room. Sephiro goes to chat with the demon lord while Ike waits. And while he's waiting, he's thinking that this demon lord is the one who turned the tide of the war against humanity and gave the demons a major advantage with just one battle. He figures the demon lord must be crazy strong and ripped, and the word on the street is that he's ice cold and ruthless. They say he's quick to kill anyone incompetent, whether they're friend or enemy. But if he sees potential in someone, he puts them to work even if they ain't got the physical or magical power. He's all about meritocracy and has totally transformed the demon army. See, demons are born to be loners, always fighting among themselves. But this current demon Lord Darrow changed all that. Sephiro gives Ike the green light to enter the throne room. So, he walks in and immediately bows his head to the demon lord. The demon lord tells him to lift his head, and Ike is shocked to see Barbie sitting on the throne. So he wonders if the demon lord's daughter left the daycare early. But turns out she's the infamous demon lord everyone's been buzzing about lately. She gives him props for taking down Arsenam in just a week. But he says he just did as he was told and that Sephiro deserves all the credit. Darrow tells him he's as humble as a human. And Ike starts sweating a bit. Sephiro tells the demon lord he's Romberg's grandson, the guardian of hell. The demon lord thinks that explains his humbleness and says he must be a deep thinker. That's probably why he didn't kill the leader or slaughter the residents of Arsenam managing to bring down the city with minimal casualties. Ike then wonders if he should listen to the piggy and kill the humans as he suggested, but he knows he can't do that because he's human himself. He thinks that he can't mess this up, so he asks the demon lord for permission to speak. She gives him the green light, saying he can speak his mind. So Ike says that humans might fear terror, but they don't bow down to it. He argues that when you compare the productivity of towns where the demon leaders executed people to the ones where they didn't, it's clear which approach is better for their army. Darrow wonders if that's what Romberg thought too, and Ike confirms it. After chatting with the demon lord, Ike realizes she must also know about the ancient civilization and use that knowledge to revolutionize the demon army. Darrow tells him he's different from the other demons and takes off, saying she'd like to see the face behind his mask one day. Ike takes off his mask once the demon lord is out of sight, and Damn was freaking nervous. He can't believe the demon lord caught onto his mask situation. Sephiro tells him he better be grateful she didn't figure out he's a human. She mentions that the demon lord gave him a reward, but it feels more like a punishment. The scene switches to Ike returning to the room where he set up a barrier. He notices the maid knocked out after chowing down on the food he left for her. He wakes her up, and she starts apologizing and begging for mercy again. He tells her to chill because he ain't gonna offer, and he asks for her name. She introduces herself as 13, and he thinks her name's pretty weird. She explains that she's a slave, and they're always called by a number. But her mom named her Sadie. 
Ike realizes he can't just let her go now that she knows his human secret. She sticks to him like glue and promises to keep it forever. Ike believes her and declares she's gonna be his maid from now on. And she's thrilled to hear that. The scene cuts to Ike in Avalia's, and we find out he's become the ruler of this city. He remembers that's the reward Sephiro mentioned. She told him Avalia's is farther south than Arsenom, and it's gonna be on the front lines of the war. It may be a small town, but it's vital for the demon army. His mission is to protect it and bring in double the tax money. I can't believe he has to double the taxes smack in the middle of a freaking war. And he thinks that if this is the front line, the humans can attack them at any time. He tells Piggy they gotta fix the walls first and asks how long it'll take. Piggy says it'll be six months, but Ike knows they don't have that kind of time. He wonders what the hell they should do and gets an idea. He tells Piggy they're gonna fix the walls in one month. Piggy thinks it's impossible, but Ike says they ain't only using human power. The next thing we see, both humans and demons are working together to repair the walls. Piggy's shocked to see the two races getting along and working in harmony. He thinks that Ike is really a damn genius, and he explains that he divided the work into eight-hour shifts so that they can work around the clock and he also paid the workers to increase their morale. Ike uses his magic to help with the repairs, and Piggy thinks that his life gonna be set if he follows him. He reckons Ike might even become the next demon lord someday. The war between humans and demons keeps on raging, and right now the demons got the upper hand, which got Darrow feeling pretty damn good, but their intel shows that the humans are about to team up with the neighboring kingdom, and if they do, it could flip the whole damn war around, so Darrow decides to put their trust in Ike to lead a successful attack. Meanwhile, in the Human Kingdom, the badass knight known as White Rose Alistair gets summoned to help reclaim Avalia's. They can't afford to lose another stronghold, so she's gotta step up, and once she gets her mission she bounces to handle it. At the same time, Ike and Sadie are on a mission of their own in the Kingdom, but Sadie gets caught up in some shady game. This dude tells her all she gotta do is guess which cup the ball is under. And if she's right, he'll double whatever cash she throws down. Sadie makes her choice, and the dude tells her to place her bet. But Sadie ain't got no money to bet with because Ike doesn't trust her with the finances. This con artist gets pissed that she wasted his time. But then he takes a second look at Sadie and says she can pay him off another way if she loses. Right then, all the cups start floating in the air, and it turns out the damn ball was never under any of them. Now all the other suckers who lost money to the dude get straight up furious and start threatening him to get their cash back. In the middle of the chaos, Ike pulls Sadie away and reminds her that she's supposed to stick by his side as his maid. Sadie apologizes, saying she was just curious. Then she notices Ike's rocking a new outfit, and Ike explains they're on a mission to spy on the enemy so they can't be walking around in their demon disguise. They start strolling through town, and as they do, they spot a whole platoon of soldiers marching through the streets. That's all Ike needed to see to confirm that the kingdom is really making that alliance. They've made these alliances before, and each time, it ended up kicking the demon lord's ass and pushing the army back to the castle. Sadie's worried the demon army might get defeated again because of this alliance, but Ike expects her to be rooting for the demons to fall since she's basically a damn prisoner right now. Sadie breaks it down for Ike, saying her old lady was a slave in human society. She knows that means she'll always be treated like a damn slave herself and end up like the broke-ass kids over there. But Ike reassures her, saying the demon army they have now is the strongest and smartest it's ever been. They ain't gonna let nobody take them down easily. As they keep strolling down the street, Ike hears someone shouting at them to halt. He turns around and sees it's the con artist trying to start some shit. Dude's mad because Ike messed up his damn scam. So he rolls up with this big dude, thinking he can rob Ike to get even. Ike looks around and sees there ain't nobody nearby, so he decides it's time to teach this con artist a little lesson. In a flash, Ike casts a spell to freeze the big guy's legs and points a bunch of icicles at the con artist. The con artist demands that Ike unfreeze his boy so he can keep robbing him, but Ike ain't playing around he stabs the dude in the shoulder to show he ain't afraid to hurt him if he don't cooperate. Finally, the dude realizes he's screwed and agrees to spill everything he wants to know. So Ike asks him what the deal is with all the soldiers in town, because they all seem to be in a mad hurry. At first, the dude claims he don't know jack shit, but Ike threatens to straight up end him immediately. That's when the con artist starts spilling about the alliance and how the Rosaria army wants to rack up some war points for themselves before the alliance steps in. Ike gets why they want to do that because more kills means more respect at the strategy meetings. But if they fail their mission, it's gonna screw Rosaria over big time. Ike pieces together where they planning to launch their attack. And the con man tells him that there's only one spot they could be aiming for, Evalia's. 
Word is, Avelia's got a massive hole in its walls, so it's gotta be an easy target. Ike's got a solid grip on the situation now. And since the con man spilled some useful info, he lets him be, but he doesn't mention nothing about unfreezing his ass. Once they make it back to Ike's office, he sits at his desk to finish up some paperwork and Sadie brings him some tea to help him unwind. Just then, this demon chick bursts into the room and demands to know where the hell Ike's been for the past few hours because she's been damn worried. Ike keeps his cool and says he was busy scoping out the kingdom of Rosaria, but his reasonable answer don't satisfy her, so she starts going after Sadie, questioning why Ike's rolling with a human by his side. Sadie introduces herself as Ike's maid. But this girl straight up dismisses her and casually calls her an ugly slave. Then she has the nerve to offer to be Ike's maid instead. Sadie's had enough at this point, so she tells the girl to back the hell off because Ike's too tired to be dealing with hoes right now. And that sets off a long ass argument between the two, accusing each other of trying to seduce Ike. Ike's smart enough to stay the hell out of that mess. Meanwhile, the Rosaria's army has gathered outside of Ivalia's, and they're getting ready to attack. They notice there ain't many guards near the walls, which seems odd. But they figure it's because the humans are short on manpower to defend their turf. They let Alistair know they're all set for the attack and ready to unleash hell when she gives the order. So Alistair gives the order to fire. But as soon as she does, a bunch of skeleton soldiers pop up out of nowhere and surround Alistair's forces. The humans think they can handle some damn skeletons because they got siege gear and all. But out of the blue, one of the soldiers gets blasted by a shot and everything goes to shit for the humans. Alistair sees they ain't got no chance of winning this battle no more. So she calls for an immediate retreat. Ike and the piggy gyron were watching the whole thing from the top of the wall. And they give props to Alistair for making the smart move to retreat. But let's be real, the only reason they had a shot was because of Ike's recon mission earlier. But while they're busy watching, an assassin sneaks up behind Ike and shoots an arrow straight into his back. Dude falls to the ground and passes the hell out. Meanwhile, the general just got word that Alistair had to retreat because of some unexpected shit. The soldier tries to explain that the demon army set up an ambush in advance. But the general ain't having it. He orders Alistair to get locked up for losing. The soldier realizes that's a dumbass move, so he tries to explain that Alistair is one of the baddest commanders in the kingdom. He's saying that throwing her ass in jail for one loss is gonna mess up the soldier's morale and screw up their future battles. But the general don't give a damn and insists on punishing Alistair for failing the mission he sent her on. Back at Avalia's, Ike wakes up in bed after healing up from his wound, but he finds Sephiro sleeping next to him. So he's got a bunch of questions to ask. First off, he wants to know why the hell she's in bed with him. But she dodges the question and says she saved his life. But something about the way she says it sounds real sketchy. Eventually, Ike gets her to drop the act and tell him what the hell happened because he don't remember shit. So she spills that she healed him after he got shot in the back with that damn arrow. It was a nasty injury, but thanks to her healing, there ain't even gonna be a scar left by now. Moving on, Sephiro mentions that the reports say not a single human got killed in the attack. She knows Ike ain't into killing folks when it ain't necessary. But if he keeps acting this way, he's gonna raise the suspicion of the demon lord again. Ike gets where Sephiro's coming from, but he's trying to find a way for humans and demons to live peacefully without all this pointless killing so needless killing would only be the opposite of his plans. Sephiro respects Ike's dedication to bringing peace between the races, so she drops the subject for now and tells him to stay put and get some rest because he's still just a human after all. Once she's gone, Ike takes a good look at the arrow that was used to shoot him. Based on what he's been told, he got shot from behind, which means either someone had to sneak into the castle to get to him or it was a betrayal from someone close to him. Right then, Ike hears a knock at the door, so he throws on his skeleton mask, just as Sadie and Lilith walk in to check up on him. They were both worried about Ike, but they're still arguing over who gets to seduce him. Lilith tells Sadie to back off, and then snuggles up against Ike's arm, but Sadie ain't having it. She wants to get close to Ike too, so they start another fight, but luckily, Jiren steps in and saves the day. He grabs Lilith and tosses her out of the room and locks the damn door. Lilith starts banging on the door, begging to be let back in. But Jiren knows she's seriously getting on Ike's nerves, so he keeps her ass out. Ike thanks him for the help and asks for a favor because he wants to know where the hell Alistair is right now. Jiren promises to look into it, and after a few hours of digging, he tells Ike that Alistair's locked up because she failed to reclaim Avalia's. This was supposed to be a simple undercover mission to meet up with Alistair. 
But damn Lilith had to follow him here. She starts warning Ike that humans can get real violent sometimes, so it ain't safe for him to come in person. But Ike thinks he'll be fine because he's got something important to ask Alistair face to face, and he doesn't even remember asking Lilith to come along. Lilith says it'll be more interesting with the two of them together, and once they're done with the mission, they can have all the fun they want, plus, Sadie got to roll with him on the last mission, so it's only fair that she gets to join him this time. Ike don't want to argue, so he lets Lilith tag along, but he tells her she better keep up with him. They finally make it to the front gate of the prison, and it doesn't look like it's heavily guarded or nothing, so Lilith thinks she could probably break in all by herself, but Ike stops her and says he don't want to cause a ruckus, instead, he wants them to get in and out quickly and peacefully. But damn Lilith already knocked out the guards while Ike was still talking. They step inside, and this place is way bigger than Ike expected, so it might take a while to find Alistair's cell, but Lilith's got a better idea. She straight up beats the crap out of the prison warden until he gives up his keys and tells her where Alistair is being held. Alistair is apparently on the top floor, but just as Ike and Lilith are about to head up, a whole bunch of guards show up because they heard all the screaming from the warden earlier. Lilith tells Ike to go on ahead without her while she deals with the guards, but before he bounces, he reminds her that he don't want no unnecessary bloodshed. Lilith promises not to kill anyone, but as Ike's leaving, he hears the guard screaming in pain with bones cracking left and right. He brushes it off for now and starts climbing the stairs till he gets to what's supposed to be Alistair's cell, but he is shocked to find it completely empty. Right then, some girl sneaks up from behind and tries to stab Ike in the back, but he dodges her and pins her down, and that girl soon turns out to be Alistair herself. So he lets her go and tells her he's got a question. He wants to know if she sent an assassin to kill him during the last battle, because if it wasn't her, then that means he's got a traitor on his hands. Instead of answering right away, Alistair gets closer to Ike and asks if he's really a demon because he don't seem like one to her. Ike tries to play dumb, but the guards start making their way up the stairs, distracting him. So Alistair takes the chance to put her knife to his throat and ask him once again if he's actually a human. She wants to know if Ike is actually human or what. The guards start closing in, but she ain't budging till she gets her answer. Since she doesn't want him moving, Ike says he won't budge, but that doesn't stop him from throwing down a spell. So before Alistair even knows what's going down, Ike starts spitting some weird Indian chant, and everybody's frozen in their tracks. Then Ike struts up to the guards and blows them away with a sick wind spell. But out of nowhere, another guard sneaks up behind Ike, swinging his mace trying to take him out. Ike pulls a slick dodge move, and when he's in the clear, he grabs that guard with some magic and sticks him to the bridge grate, sending him straight to his demise. But right before he hits the ground, Ike busts out another spell to break his fall. Alistair can't wrap her head around why Ike would go through all that trouble to save a human. But damn the bridge is way more messed up than Ike thought, and Alistair is still stuck there, unable to move. So eventually, that grate beneath her gives way, and she's falling to her doom. But just like before, Ike swoops in and saves her ass before she hits the ground. Alistair's even more baffled now because it ain't making any damn sense for a demon to be saving her life. But Ike brushes her off and finally introduces himself properly. He straight up claims he's the commander of the Seventh Army of the Demon Lord, and Alistair puts two and two together. Ike must be that general who held it down against her troops in Avalius. Ike uses his demon commander status as proof that he ain't no human. Like, no way the demon army would be dumb enough to let a human climb the ranks like that. Alistair starts thinking Ike's a demon for real, so Ike asks her again if she sent an assassin. But she's stubborn as hell and won't give him a damn thing. She's a proud knight loyal to her kingdom, and she'd rather die than spill any info that could help the enemy. Ike realizes she ain't budging with the answers he wants, so he steps up real close to Alistair and starts digging into her mind with some mind-reading magic. Just as he's doing his thing, Lilith pops in mad as hell because Ike's flirting with some human chick when she's right there. She tries to get Ike to hug her instead, but he already got all the deets he needed from Alistair's head. So he says he will be leaving now. As Ike and Lilith bounce, Alistair shouts out and asks why Ike went through all that trouble breaking into the prison if he was just gonna peace out peacefully. Ike straight up tells her he ain't got no reason to stick around no more because he knows Alistair had nothing to do with the assassination. And while he was digging into her mind, he caught a glimpse of a couple of her thoughts. 
so Ike tells Alistair she shouldn't beat herself up over losing the battle for Avelia's. It's all good for a commander like her to learn from her mistakes and keep moving forward. After that, he tells Lilith to get ready to bounce, but she suggests they find a private spot and have a little fun first. But Ike shuts her down quick and opens a portal to teleport them back to the castle. And once they vanish, Alistair is left with a whole lot of questions about what the hell just went down. Back at the house, Ike gets greeted by Sadie as he rolls in. He tells her he's got a present for her. Sadie's curious and goes over to him, and Ike pours a bag of rice into her hand. Sadie's never seen rice before, so she ain't got a clue what it is. Ike tells her he found it in the capital city of Laza's and that it'll boost the productivity of Avelia's. See, he got ordered to find a way to double the tax revenue for the town. So while Avelia's already pumps out a bunch of wheat, if they switch to growing rice, he can crank up the productivity of the whole damn place. Sadie doesn't know what the hell productivity means, so Ike takes it upon himself to break it down. He tells her it means they can grow a whole lot of rice compared to wheat. And that means they won't need as many farmers to work on the fields, and those folks can do other stuff with their time. So overall, the productivity of Avalia is gonna keep rising and eventually make them rich. Ike asks if Sadie gets what he just said, but her brain's still trying to process the whole productivity thing. So Ike's economics lesson was a total waste. He simplifies it and says it means people gonna have plenty of food to eat, and he gonna be stacking up that tax money in the process. Sadie finally gets what Ike's saying. So to get things rolling, he wants her to whip up something with the rice. Sadie ain't never cooked rice before, so she asks Ike what she is meant to do with it. But damn, even Ike doesn't know because he ain't never seen rice either. Sadie's shocked that there's stuff even Ike doesn't know but she is still clueless about what to do with the rice. All Ike knows is that you gotta go from low to high and never take off the lid, even if the baby crying, so he leaves it up to Sadie to figure out the rest while he handles some important business in town. A few minutes later, Ike hollers for Jiren to gather all the soldiers and his crew in the courtyard. Once that's done, he starts thinking about what he's figured out so far. The arrow used in the assassination attempt came from Alistair's army, but he read her mind, and she ain't know nothing about no assassination attempt. That means somebody tried to assassinate him and make it look like Alistair was behind it. While he ain't liking the idea of suspecting his soldiers, he gotta face the fact that there's probably a spy among them. He busts out his mind reading magic and scans the brains of everyone gathered. After going through everyone's mind, he finds a goblin who's freaking out and praying he don't get caught. As soon as Ike's suspicions confirmed, he teleports right in front of the goblin and straight up accuses him of being a spy. Later on, Ike heads over to Sephiro's castle to get some advice, but he teleports in while Sephiro's taking a bath. She don't seem to mind being naked in front of Ike all that much, but Ike ain't cool with it, so he says he'll wait outside. Before he dips though Sephiro asks him if he got a traitor in his army. That catches Ike's attention because he ain't told nobody about the spy goblin yet. So he asks how she found out. Sephiro says she just made a guess. So Ike spills that the traitor behind it all is Jace, the one-eyed goblin. Sephiro ain't surprised to hear that because she has been suspicious of Jace for a while. So Ike asks her what he should do now. She gets out of her bath and says they're gonna make Jace pay for betraying them. Meanwhile back in Ivalia's, Jace gets word from his crew that Ike paid a visit to Sephiro recently. He can't wrap his head around how Ike bounced back so fast after they shot him in the back. But things go from bad to worse when one of his homies tells him they lost contact with their spy and Ike's crew. Jace knows this ain't good news. It probably means Ike's onto his little scheme. So he decides he gonna gather his troops and go after Ike before he gets taken out. But damn he gets hit with a horror show when he finds out Ike's out in the streets looking for him. Jace steps up and meets Ike, acting all nice saying Ike should have given him a heads up if he was gonna roll through out of the blue. Ike says he just happened to be in the neighborhood and wanted to pay Jace a visit solo. But Jace shows up with his whole crew, so Ike asks if he is planning to start a freaking war or something. Jace tells Ike this is his turf, so he got no business being here in the first place. He also points out how Ike got tagged with an arrow not too long ago, making it seem like Ike losing his edge as a commander. Ike agrees, saying he was careless back then, but he never saw the betrayal coming from someone on his own squad. No way he could have predicted that. Since Ike knows Jace the traitor, Jace drops the nice act and tells Ike he was careless coming here alone because now Jace and his whole army gonna tear him apart. Ike's actually glad to hear that Jace brought his whole army because now he can just blow them all up at once. Jace looks up in the sky and sees a bunch of massive meteors raining down. That's Sephiro doing her thing with a wickedly destructive spell. She loves unleashing that power so much, 
that she forgot to give Ike a heads up to get the hell out of the blast zone, but she's pretty sure he'll be fine. Down on the ground, Ike ain't fine at all. He gotta hide behind a building to avoid getting blown to bits. He asked Sephiro to tone down her attack so they could rebuild this part of the city later. But she clearly ignored him because this is way too damn intense. Once the initial explosion show is over, Sephiro starts phase 2 of the plan. She orders her skeleton soldiers to start taking out all the goblins who manage to survive. And the slaughter fest begins. As Jace watches his crew bite the dust, Ike teleports right behind him and gives him a damn choice. He can either surrender right now or wait until everyone's six feet under. And even after witnessing Ike's battisary, Jace stupidly orders his crew to off Ike. Ike busts out a wind spell and blows away the two fools coming at him from the front. But while he's doing that, some goblin tries to stab him in the back. Little did that goblin know. Ike had a shield ready to protect his ass. He straight up annihilates the rest of the goblins with his magic. Meanwhile, Jace's punk ass is making a run for it because he never gave a damn about his soldiers in the first place. But before he can make a clean getaway, Sephiro's monster blocks his path. So he gotta use a smoke bomb to distract it and sneak away into some damn alley. Dude slinks into a portal and ends up in the damn forest, thinking he outsmarted Ike and Sephiro. But just as he's about to head down his secret pathway, Ike shoots a damn fireball at him. Jace asks how the hell Ike found him when only he knows about that secret path. Ike explains that he has been tracking Jace with one of his familiars the whole damn time. Then he tells Jace to surrender right away because there ain't no way Jace gonna win or escape. Instead of surrendering, Jace decides to attack Ike. But his punches ain't shit against Ike's shield spell. So Ike blows his sorry ass back. Jace gets all tied up with magic vines and hung up like a damn fool. And that's when Jace finally admits defeat. You can see why the demon lord holds Ike in such high regard, and Jace himself thinks Ike has mad skills. So he got a proposition for him, he wants Ike to team up with him and take over the demon lord's army. Bringing things back to the good old days, Jace complains about how the demon lord doesn't let demons kill humans without a damn good reason. Even though demons naturally enjoy subjugating and killing humans, there's a bunch of demons who ain't feeling her way of doing things, so Jace invites Ike to help overthrow her because she ain't fit to be the demon lord. Ike straight up ain't having it. So Jace breaks free one of his hands and hurls a knife at Ike, but Ike effortlessly dodges that shit, and he feels insulted that Jace really thought that weak move would work on him. Ike starts grilling Jace about who else plotting to overthrow the demon lord but he refuses to reveal any damn information. Sephiro shows up real quick, ready to torture Jace as much as needed to squeeze out the info. But Ike pleads with her to let him handle it peacefully because he ain't trying to cause excessive harm. Sephiro whining about how Ike's methods are taking too damn long, so she is about to get real brutal. Right then, Jace starts turning purple and screaming in pain, even though Sephiro ain't even done jack shit yet. That can only mean the other demons in his crew poisoned him to keep him quiet. Ike tries using an antidote spell, but that poison is too damn potent. So Jace gonna kick the bucket sooner or later. Before he bites the dust, Sephiro asks Jace if he still wanna protect the snakes who poisoned him without a second thought. Jace agrees to spill about the rebellion leaders so Sephiro can get her revenge. Once they got all that damn info, Sephiro and Ike roll up to Darrow to let her know there's a rebellion going on led by some punk-ass 3rd Division commander named Bastio. And since they accusing Bastio of straight-up treason, Darrow wanna hear his side of the story. But that's where this video ends. If you want to see more of this series, let me know in the comments section. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.